Good morning. You're my revival song, you meet me here where I belong this morning, on my knees, on my knees, when I am weak, you're strong, you meet me here where I belong, on my knees, on my knees. What can I do to leave a legacy? How can I speak with authority when I can't see you? I can't see you. How do I know the dreams you have for me? How do I believe we own what I have seen? I can't hear you. I cannot feel you now. Say hello. 
a little Bryson Nelson over there on the drums. Again, we've, you've met Bryson before, but. Uh, my name is Tim Timmons, and I told you before, it's not a joke, it's just not that creative. You know, it's just, same name twice. And I have a lot of kids and a total babe for a wife of um, 19 years now. And uh, it feels like 20 kids because Malia, she is, um, she's nine and Noah is seven. And then we had a surprise pregnancy, like surprise. And they happen to be twins. And so we call them the Twimmins and they feel like 20 kids. Anyways, my daughter was, my oldest daughter was praying for us before we were going out on tour somewhere. And she said, uh, she said, Jesus, would you be with daddy as he goes out on tour? Come on, woman. Like, oh, right. And it's just our kids, they mimic our prayers, which is both awesome and terrifying. And honestly, it hit me in that room that I think it's one of the worst prayers I've ever taught my daughter. It's like me saying right now, you guys, check it out. Jesus, would you be with us this morning? And he's like, hmm, yeah, give me five minutes and I'll be there. But check again later. No, that's crazy. That is a crazy prayer. He is among us all the time. Emmanuel, God with us, is not just December 25th. It's all year round. Can I get an amen? Like, what if that's true? Somebody always yells, it is true. Okay, what if we lived like that was true? What if our new prayer was not ever again, ever again, Jesus, would you please be with me today as I go into work or into this thing? No, it's Jesus, where are you at work in this stuff? How can I join you in what you're doing, you know? It just changes everything. I'm gonna teach you a song. There's a city that calls me by name. There's a city that calls me by name. Yes, as I run this race, I'm cheered by the saints. There's a city that calls me by name. A city again. There's a city that calls me by name. Come on. There's a city that calls me by name. Yes, as I run this race, I'm cheered by the saints. There's a city that calls me by name. Your breath upon these bones. Your 
fire in my soul your kingdom is my home so i don't So I will not be afraid Where I go, I go with you Everywhere I go, all the food I am Where I go, I go with you so I won't be afraid, this is my hope Come with me, where I go, I go with you Where I go, I go with you Everywhere I go, I go with you. Everywhere I go, I go with you. Try with me. Everywhere I go, I go with you. Everywhere I go, I go with you again. Everywhere I go, sing it. I go with you. Everywhere I go, I go with you, Jesus. I go, I go with you. So I'll praise you, not that I have to, not that I ought to, but that I may. I'll praise you, not that I have to, not that I ought to, but that I may. Just the chorus goes like this. So even in the battle, you are good, you are good. Even in the struggles, I've never understood, be it joy or pain, still my life will say you are God and you are good so last time I was here you can take a seat for a little bit and I'll, I'll get you back up <laughs> trust me did I hear a thank you it was uh so i guess i would say a few years back so um last time i was here i probably said that 13 years ago that i was given five years to live today i get to stand before you and i get to say that 15 years ago i was given five years to live come on that's just pretty great Like, I woke up today. <laughs> they said that uh, you have an incurable cancer. That's the diagnosis, an incurable cancer, stage four, um, that it's wearing out your heart. There's still four tumors on your liver now, Tim. And, uh, well, you keep waking up. <laughs> I write this on my wrist every day. Um, you might think it's a tattoo, but you know, I'm still going to heaven. You got some toy pine. <laughs> just kidding. Um, I write this because I have to every day. It's just a little X on my wrist, just remembering Jesus. Number one, I, I, I woke up today. Awesome. Another one. And I'll keep going through why I, I do that throughout the morning. But there are times when I break down and I lose it, and mostly that's dealing with my 20 kids and you think through all these things and you go down these lists of worries and okay but I want to see them when they're graduate I want to see them and if you want to get me crying we can just keep going down this road but Jesus's invitation is not for me to keep going down that road for one I'm so grateful that I woke up today he says hey Timmons that's how he talks to me 
You don't have to worry anymore. I know you're addicted to worry, Tim, but you don't have to. I have struggles that I do not understand. Every time I go to the doctor, even a month ago, we went back in. I was kind of like we had done our scans, and I was kind of I was going in and saying, "All right, Jesus, it's gone. Awesome, giddy up. This is going to be awesome. I can't wait to watch the doctor's face." You know. And you go in, and well, there's still four tumors, and I'm like, "Oh, struggles I don't understand." Right? Yet, is God still God, or is He not? Is my praise any less powerful? I'll praise him not that I have to, not that I'm supposed to, that I ought to, but that I may. Is he any less good because my circumstances are X or Y? Here's what I'd love for us to do. This is just nerdy old me up here. Each of you have something that you're walking through right now. And if you don't, my dad always says, wait a week, it's coming. Would you just close your eyes for a sec? What are the struggles and the worries and the fears that you don't understand? Things that you brought into this room today?
your circumstance, God, you are good. Oh, remind our souls, remind our souls in the midst of our worries and struggles today. Jesus, awaken our souls, awaken our souls, awaken our souls. Oh, please awaken our souls, awaken our souls, awaken our souls. You're the king and we're not right. Seek first the kingdom of God, kingdom of God, kingdom of God, not mine, right? Seek first the kingdom of God, kingdom of God, kingdom of God, go pray. Seek first the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, even in the battle. Because even in the battle, you are good, you are good. Even in the struggles I've never understood, be it joy or pain, still my life will say, you are God and you are good. You are God and you If our God's for us, then who can ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then what can stand against? And if our God is Nothing. What can stand against joy? Absolutely nothing. Nothing can stand against joy, no. Doesn't matter what the circumstances look like. They do not distract from joy. Jesus, would you remind our souls of things this morning? Would you awaken our souls this morning? to a new reality of you, not of a religion or a gathering or an institution, but Jesus, to you. Thank you that you woke us up today. What a great gift. Thank you that you have so much more for us that we just forget all the time, I forget all the time, how much more you have for us. Would you remind us of that again? Awaken our souls as we seek first the good news, the actual gospel, which is the availability of your kingdom that is alive and well right here, right now, that we would not ever pray again. Would you please be with us today? But Jesus, you are among us. You are with us and at work in all things. Open our eyes. Can I get an amen? Hey. Hey. Hello. I changed a little bit about what I was going to um, come in with. Tom's awesome, by the way. And Jason's awesome, and Mark is awesome. All the people that I've, I've met, you guys have a really great leadership team, just so you know. And we travel the country, this is what we do, and different venues, and we get to meet great people, and some people you go, okay, well, Jesus... You do what you're going to do. But when you meet great people that are part of something bigger and beautiful, it's, it's really fun. So be encouraged. One of the things that uh, we get to do is we get to uh, travel the country. And we get to have a really interesting view of the church. Um, 
I'm talking like big C church. Like the church. Remember, church, just F U N, I suppose fun. For fun, the church is uh, who we are, right? It's, it's impossible biblically. It's, it's just not correct biblically to go to church. Like you can't go to church. You can't do church. You are the church. We are the church gathered and scattered in the name and the power and the authority of Jesus. So let me just start out by saying, well done gathering and keep gathering well. Keep going. You have a great team that's, that's inviting you into something bigger than just a religion, into just Jesus and actual beauty and powerful and kingdom, right? But we get to travel the country and we get to just see a really interesting view of the church. And as Tom and I were talking this morning, I just, I, I just sense and just I'm changing stuff up. And just for fun, hopefully it's encouraging. And if not, you can go, wow, that guy was something else. <laughs> Anytime somebody's terrible up on stage, that was my, my mentor always said, man, you just say, man, that was something. <laughs> man, you were really up there. Like you, was that a guitar? Wow. <laughs> and your hair is beautiful, Tim. So if you come up to me and say, man, that was something, I'll just, that'll be our little language. That was not good, Tim. <laughs> and, and don't deviate from your norm, Tim, is what you're saying. There are three things that I see as we travel the country. And I, I think it's, it's just helpful for us to be reminded of these things. There are some of you in this room that are way beyond anywhere that I will ever be as far as knowing Jesus. And I'm so grateful for you. Um, I, was, I was a varsity American Christian for 33 years. I mean, I was awesome. I mean, try to beat me. I was so awesome. Like, if you want to do a Bible off or whatever, I will win. I'm awesome. I was awesome. I knew how to do that. I know what to show you, what not to show you. I knew how to do the right things emotionally to get you to do things, and I knew how to do that myself, and I knew how to play the game, and I was awesome. Yet, these three things remained in me. And seven years ago, Jesus began a new work in me. And again, some of you are like way beyond me. I, I call myself right now a preschooler as a follower of Jesus. Like literally, I'm in preschool, and it's a little like funny at times. You know, because I feel like I'm so back to the basics. And again, some of you are like, you're, you're like, I don't know, seniors in high school or something. And I just, I need to keep learning from you. So thank you. But it came to this place where I knew all about Jesus. I just didn't know him. I mean, I could tell you all about, I could tell you about the kingdom of God. I could tell you all these things and the verses that go with each of these things. And man, this is what we do in our 80 minute gathering. Because by the way, there are 10,000, 80 minutes in a week. 80 of those are in this room right here, which is awesome. Keep gathering really well but there are 10,000 other minutes during the week. Until you gather in this room again, there are 10,000 minutes. 80? 10,000. Just started changing the way that I was seeing things seven years ago. Tim, do you look... <laughs> if anybody said, man, is the Spirit of God in that guy? Do I look any different in the 10,000 than I do in the 80? Could somebody look at my life and go, wow, with or without the Spirit, there's a change there? And I'd kind of say in my heart, no. Three things. First thing, uh, I've been addicted to worry and fear my whole life. Straight up addicted. I mean, if you were to look at me, not in the 80 minutes, because I got this thing going on, right? But like in the 10,000 minutes, if you were to look at the things that I'm into and I'm worrying about and thinking about and going future tripping on, right, and going down these ways, you would see something pretty different in my heart. You'd see a lot of worry and a lot of anxiety. But I go, oh, it's yours, Jesus, but then I'd take it right back. Seek first the kingdom of, seek first the, of, and he seems to work things out. But I was like, you know what, God? I'm going to let you do that real well. You can play that king role. You know, you can play some king role up there in the 80 minutes. You're going to rock at that. But in the 10,000 minutes, I'm going, to, I'm going to help you out a little bit. I don't know if you're all always there. you got a lot of people to hang out with. So every time I worry, I become the king of my kingdom. Do I not? Because the king goes, hey, this is how this sucker is going to turn out. Right? 
That's what a king does. He says, yep, this is how, yep, this is how it's going to turn out. The outcome, I'm in charge of the outcome. I, God, you do your thing, but I'm like, here's what I'm going to do because i got to worry about this stuff. Women, it's not about your queendoms. Right? It's about seek first the of, and he seems to work things out. Just this mind blower of like, oh, goodness. It's not about my kingdom. Every time I worry, I become the king of my kingdom. Every time you worry, you become the queen of your queendom. We, as the church, are just addicted to worry and fear, just like any other neighbor that we'd have. I don't know how different we look. And yet, we all know this. We all believe this. But there's a difference in actually living as though it's true. What if, in Matthew 6, we know one of Jesus' great invitations is, hey, you guys, in the kingdom of God, you don't have to worry anymore. I mean, you can if you want, but how's that going for you? Right? Okay, just for fun, everybody, close your eyes. What are the worries that you brought in this room? Just think about those for a second. What if you're able to say, you know what, I'm, not, I'm just going to practice this this week. I'm not going to be the king of this. I'm going to let you be the king. Everywhere the king is hailed as king, there is the kingdom of God. Just think about your next week and what it would look like for you to actually give him control over those worries and the outcome of those things. Okay, anybody for fun just want to say that would change my week? Anybody have a thought about that? I mean, that would drastically change our week. So at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus has, which is just this time when Jesus is hanging out on the mountain talking to a bunch of people. That's basically what it is. I don't, we don't have to get too religious about it. It's just him on a mountain talking to a ton of people, inviting people into something awesome, right? And in this, he's talking about, you don't have to worry anymore, you guys. Again, you can if you want, but like in the kingdom, I'm the king, and because I'm the king and I'm into you, we can do this. So just deal with the things I put in front of you today, right? Wouldn't that be amazing if we actually lived as though that was true? I think we'd live a lot longer. Jesus says at the end, he says, so whoever hears my words and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on a rock. And if you don't, you're, you're a fool. It's kind of like, duh, right? And I look back at my life, you guys, and the 10,000 minutes of my life, most of them are filled with being a fool. The 80 minutes, I'm like, even in the battle, you are good. You got all this, God. And then once I get out of here into the next 10,000 minutes, I'm like, even, well, I got this, God. I got this part, but you kind of take this part because I don't, you know. I mean, does that make sense? Do you do that at all? Or am I the only one who plays king in my life as if I'm the king of the kingdom? Yet I'm going to do it for him, God. God, I'm going to do this for you. But he's like, I don't need your little kingdom or queendom. Like, I got my own, and it's awesome. And in mine, you actually don't have to worry anymore. I mean, stuff's going to come up. Circumstances are inevitable. But we can either practice, whoever puts my words into practice all week long, is a wise man, woman. So we can practice this week, you guys. We can practice trust all week long. Or we can practice worry. I mean, it's hard to get much simpler than that. Isn't that crazy? Like, literally, you guys, we can practice trust this week. Again, I write this every day. Do whatever you want if you're scared of sharpieitis, the, the disease that a doctor told me once I was going to get. Do your own thing. I don't know, put a rubber band or something. Practice trust this week. Just try it. Or you can practice worry. And how's that going for us, right? This is the great invitation of Jesus, which you guys, we know. And, and we'd say that we believe in Jesus, right? We go, yes, oh, I can put my trust in him. So how many of us believe eating healthy and working out are the best things for our body? How many of us believe that? I mean, come on. Come on. How many of us believe that eating healthy and working out are the best things for our body? Can I get an amen? Right? <clears throat> so what would you eat for, you know, lunch yesterday? Who cares what you believe? 
Jesus rarely uses the word to believe, which many of you know. He rarely uses it, only really in the book of John. And when he does, it means to be found living as though something is true. Same as faith, trust. So when we say, Jesus, I believe that you're the king, that means we're found living as though that is true all day long. We are practicing trust instead of practicing worry. It's been a game changer in my life. So over the past uh, two years, uh, my family and I and some friends, we've just been, um, we've been doing experiments, practices every week. And I started a blog called 10,000minutes.com, 1000minutes.com. And I basically, we have an experiment, a practice that we're doing all week long. And we've just started practicing these things. And so in the mornings, I just start practicing writing down the things that I think about right in the morning. So I start practicing that. And most of my thoughts when I wake up are, are worries. It's crazy. So I practice all day long going, okay, I'm going to practice trusting you today, Jesus. You're God and I'm not. You're at work in all things. How would that change your week, right? This past week, uh, two weeks ago, uh, part of the experiment on 10,000 Minutes was um, it was praying for your enemy. <laughs> and so my son is seven and really cute, you guys. Um, but he's being called fat and, like, all these names at school. And I wanted to tell him, to like, buddy, go up and punch that kid right in the mouth. <laughs> I said, buddy, I want to tell you to do this. But remember what our experiment is this week, what we're practicing? We're going to start praying for our enemies, right? That's what we're doing this week. <laughs> so my son, I told him, buddy, if that kid says it again, you, you know, it, whether it changes or not, this is going to change our heart. And this is what Jesus wants. So we're going to start putting this stuff into practice. Because I'm doing it with all these other thousands of people, so I should probably do it in my house, you know. My son went up to the kid the next day, and the kid called him fatty, and he took his water. And, and my son said, um, don't call me that again, and uh, please give me one water back, please. And the kid said, okay. And gave it right back to him. My son had a victory in practicing a principle of Jesus. We could talk about these things until we are blue in the face or extremely large with knowledge about Jesus, Right? 80 minutes are awesome, but if the 80 minutes don't actually translate into the 10,000, it's kind of a waste of our time. This is nothing new. We all want this, but I'm just, I've been trying to figure out how do we actually start practicing. Last weekend, that same weekend, I had these guys come up to me and just start, I mean, ridiculing me. It was like serious. We were doing this men's conference, and every time I'd lead, they'd come up and get their Bibles out, and where do you find that in the Bible? I'm like, oh, my goodness, wow, I'm getting, like, attacked by these guys. They were mean and angry. The first two times, I'm like, I want to punch you in the face right now. <laughs> and then that night, I was practicing. Oh, yeah, I'm going to pray for my enemies right now. These guys are totally my enemies. I started praying for them. I haven't stopped praying for those guys, partly because I have to my heart, but it's changing my life. Practicing trust is changing my life. Uh, worry is not something that is like on me anymore. It like, it like water comes off. It's a whole new world. What if we put into practice what we believe? Isn't that crazy? Does that make sense? We walk around addicted to worry, but Jesus says you don't have to. The next one is that, uh, what was it? We're joyless. We walk around joyless because when the stuff hits the fan, our happy goes right down, right? It's just true. I, I hear it every, every, every day because um, people know about my journey with cancer. And, and I go, I totally get it. I totally get it. But until we get to a place where joy is outside of circumstance... We're going to be like this. So Jesus says, hey, you guys, you can either practice trust or you can practice this. We're joyless, yet Jesus says in John 15, you guys, if you hang out with me, seek first the of. And he talks about a branch and a vine. I think it's about the same story, really. But if you just stay attached to me, you guys, your joy will be made complete. Any of us deal with happy and joy going like this? Anybody? Come on, I'm with you. Jesus' invitation is, you guys, 
I know that that's true, and that seems like that's what you should be feeling right now, but my joy is going to start like bubbling out all over you. That's what we get, and so we can practice th this, or we can practice joy. It's, just, it's crazy. The third one that I see is power. We, I have walked, I have walked for 33 years powerless. But you know what? The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of me. Woo! I got that going on until the 10,000 minutes happens. And I start getting offended. Just for fun, close your eyes. When was the last time you got offended? Just think about it. Okay. Whose kingdom or queendom was threatened? Yeah. Is that crazy? And so I walk around going, man, that guy cut me off. I, you know, whatever. My kingdom was threatened. But seek first the of. And he seems to know what he's doing. Jesus says, hey, you guys, when Jesus talks, he says, you guys, go out and tell people the good news, which the gospel, according to Jesus, is the availability of the kingdom of God. That's the good news, according to Jesus. That is the good news. The cross is the way to that, which is so great, but the good news is the kingdom. And then he said, go heal people in my name. I mean, that's actually, those are like Jesus' words. I mean, he, kind of, he might know what he's talking about. And as a priest glory, I'm like, oh my goodness, what if this stuff's actually true? What if I started practicing saying, you know what, Jesus, it's not about my kingdom, not about my queendom today. I'm going to seek first your kingdom today. All day long. I don't have to walk with worry anymore. I mean, every time it happens, we just go, okay, Jesus, you're at work. Where are you at work? We don't have to walk joyless anymore. We can if we want, but we don't have to. According to Jesus, he's like, I have so much more for you. And then we don't have to walk powerless. And can I just say this as we're wrapping? The fullness of God. Okay, do anybody have like a visual for the fullness of God? I mean, like fullness. I don't know how to do this other, you know, I'm trying to be really animated. Fullness of God is in you. What's your name, man? Marsha. Hi, Marsha. The fullness of God is in you. What's your name in the blue? You, right here. Yeah. Terry? Terry. The fullness of God is in you. Not just in these 80 minutes, but all week long in the 10,000 minutes. I could do this all day. You guys, what if that's actually true? It is true, right? Okay. What if we were found living as though that was actually true? Is that crazy? Like our worry would be so different. And what, what if I believed in your power and I really lived it? What? What if I believe Christ in me? Oh, oh, what if I believe it's your turn? What, come on. what if I believe in your power and I really live it? What, what if I believe Christ in me? Oh, oh, what if I believe then I would lay my worries down and see these hills as level ground what if i believe christ in me then i would praise you with my life and let my story lift you high what if i believe christ in me Church, remember church is not a thing you can go to or a thing you can do. It's who we are gathered and scattered in the name and the power and the authority of Jesus.
The same spirit and power and authority that raised him from the stinking dead lives inside of me and lives inside of you all week long. What if it's true? All right. The same great light that broke the dark, the same great peace that calmed the seas, hallelujah, is living in me right at your turn. The same great light that broke the dark, you ready? One, two, three. The same great light that broke the dark, the same great peace that calmed the seas, hallelujah, is living in me, yeah. Same great love gives us breath. Here we go. The same great love gives us breath. The same great power that conquered death. Hallelujah. It's flowing through me all week long. And what, what if I believed in your power and I really lived it? What, what if I believed? Clap together because we're in agreement on things, right? Same great love, here we go. The same great love casts out fear. The same compassion draws us near. How do Where's the living? It's living in me all week long. Same great love, mercy. Same great mercy that I receive. Amazing grace for a wretch like me. How Flowing through me all week long. And what, what if I believed in your power? Yeah, and I really lived it. What, what if I believed Christ in me? Oh, what if I believed in my worries now? What if I believe what? What if I believe Christ in me? Oh, what if we were found living as though it's actually true? Not just in these 80 minutes when we gather, but the next 10,000 minutes until you gather again. The same power, spirit, fullness of God that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of me and inside of you. Then and only then I would lay my worries down. Come on and see these hills as a level ground. What if I believe Christ in me then I would pray and let my story lift you high, Jesus. What if I Jesus, that is your great invitation for us. Just say, you guys, you guys, you can walk out of this room and not be taken by worry and fear anymore because I'm the king and you're not. And I'm awesome, Jesus, you'd say. I'm a 
at work in all things. Everywhere I go, on this road, high and low, Jesus, where we go, we go with you. So we won't be afraid. You're our hope. Holy Spirit, thank you that you are, um, you said something to us today. Whether it was about fear, whether it was about the lack of joy and just actually wanting your joy that is made complete when we're just staying attached to you. Or we feel so powerless in life and you say, I will empower you. The same spirit and power that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of us. Thank you. Thank you that that is your invitation for us today as we leave, as we scatter as your church.